All right, David, I'd love to ask you um, if you can help clarify this for me. So I want to know when do we go auto and when do we go allo? Just, I know it's, I mean, there's no universals, but just in general. Yeah. How do we choose? So if we're talking implant complications, implant comps, you're always auto. Always, always auto. auto. So okay. if you got, if we're talking about, uh, Recession. Oh, just by the way, I have a little hard time seeing there. Can you, can you write that just a little bit bigger? We'll Re just, we'll just write a little bit bigger on that side. Recession. All right. Um, any like mucogingival deficiencies? Okay. You're going to go auto. Okay. Um, if you have frenum pulls. Frenum pulls. Okay. Frenum pulls. Shallow vestibules. Issues with implant position, not major issues to where you got to take out the implant, but mm -hmm. just minor ones. So you're all these types of things are going autographed. It's a lot of indications. So yeah. auto is always the the safest thing to use. Yeah, safest thing in our hands. Got it. That's by far the most predictable and probably longest lasting too. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, now when would you use allografts? Are great for Prevention, right? So anytime you want to prevent a problem from happening. So on one side here, you've got complications, the other one's prevention. So here, if we want to make good tissue great, I think we used that term earlier. If we, if we want to make something go from good to great, you'll go with an allograph. So if you have Let's just say you already have two millimeters of keratinized tissue and maybe mm -hmm. you want three or or if it's or it's two millimeters thick you want it four you know that's mm -hmm. great but let's just say it's one and a half you know and the goal's two and you're like ah should i really put my patient through a palatal graft to get an extra half a millimeter of thickness i mean probably not mm -hmm. so in situations like that where you're just kind of borderline good make it great by using an allograft these are also good for small gingival deformities so small gingival deformities so if it's you have like a like a weird little concavity on the facial mm -hmm. or or on the occlusal yeah. surface like we did in those implant cases those are really great as far as this is good for little changes little bitty changes mm -hmm. as far as timing goes these are all good at you know at the time of implant placement mm -hmm. Um, but you know, whereas autographs usually, you know, anytime you've already restored the tooth, you almost always have to go with an autograph because you don't want to make things worse. Oh, I see. Yeah. So uh, if so, you're doing a revision to an existing implant, you're not going to use an allograph. No, okay. no. And the reason that is, is allografts, the thing that you have to worry about with them more than autographs is that when you have, you have the risk of, of a catastrophic failure. Okay. okay. Yeah, that sounds good. So I don't want any catastrophic failure. And when I say catastrophic, I mean it gets the patient could be worse than when they started, mm -hmm. and that can happen with allografts because when an allograft fails or and it necroses, it can take the flap with it, and I don't want that to happen. I see. Okay. So that's why they're done. They would be done time of placement. Time of placement Implant. mostly, right? Or any time before that. Okay. Time of placement or any time before. Okay. Autographs, you know, th that's when, you know, bad things have already happened and we're having to really gain and we're having to recover. So this is good for implant recovery, you know. Uh, these are also good if we need a large volume of, t of tissue. So mm -hmm. if we're trying to get, you know, two millimeters, two millimeters or greater of, of volume, you're going to need an autograft. You're not going to get that with an allograft. So my last question here. Is there allograft for F, G, G, and for connective tissue? Like, nope. do, do these exist, both of these? No. Okay. You cannot use an allograft for an FGG. Got it. It will die and cause everything else to die around it. Do they make them? No. Okay. That's I mean, good. they make the graft, how you decide to use it, mm -hmm. Is, is dependent oh, on you, but I see. you I see. don't use it as a free gingival I graft. Meaning, meaning don't use it as an onlay graft. Only inlay for aloe. Yep. Cool, that, that yep. clarifies just about everything about it, I think. So if you ever see an implant that's majorly, that's got, ma needs major soft tissue work, need a lot of volume, 
they're always going to go with an autographed. Mm -hmm. If you ever see a case you're like, man, it actually looked pretty good to begin with, eh, you can use an allograft, mm -hmm. okay, just to make small changes. Uh, keep in mind, allografts have to be 100% covered with overlying tissue. Mm -hmm. Whereas an autograft, you can kind of leave it exposed a little bit. It's not a big deal because it's an autograft. It'll get incorporated to the surrounding tissue. Allografts are different. If you leave too much of it exposed or any of it exposed sometimes, the whole thing dies. All right? Cool.